All right, guys, we're going to be talking about the healthcare system in Costa Rica and also as it applies to the gringos when they move here. It's kind of a 101. It's kind of a 101 on the healthcare system in Costa Rica. It will probably beg more questions than answers, but this will give you a good overview to get you started because we're going to be doing some deep dives as well on the healthcare system and some upcoming videos. We're going to get to that in a minute, and I'll introduce Johnny, if you don't know who he is. Hey, guys, I'm Michael Allen for TravelCostaRicanow.com. TravelCostaRicanow.com is a travel agency, so go to TravelCostaRicanow.com. Fill out the four-minute form. You'd be that much closer. Vacation of a lifetime. We're like you, having best friends who live in Costa Rica, who know Costa Rica, totally hooking up your Costa Rica vacation. Hey, man, if you haven't subscribed, please do. It's a big help. If you want to see videos as we put them up, hit the notification bell. And if you really want to help, what really helps is comment on the videos. Even with an emoji or a thumbs up, a thumbs down. Mike, I hate your shirt. It doesn't matter what it is. It's it's helpful. So I'd appreciate it. All right, guys. Do you know Johnny? Do you know Johnny? We've done a lot of videos. He's our medical dental tourism guy in Costa Rica. Now, we're not really going to be talking about medical dental tourism. But if you need your liposuction, your breast augmentation, your stem cell therapy, your hip replacement, your whatever it is you want to do, he can help you. And guess what? Not just in Costa Rica, in Mexico too. How do I know he can help you in Mexico? Because we have a bunch of videos where we're up in Mexico doing what he does, checking out hospitals. As a matter of fact, a lot of uh, YouTube didn't allow my Mexican uh, medical tourism videos to, I don't know, the algorithms didn't get them out to many people. So I'm going to put a couple of the better ones in the link below if you missed those because one of my best interviews was in Mexico, not because of me, but the doctor I was talking to. And again, those links will be in the description and if you want to get a hold of johnny go to our website scroll down fill out the little medical dental tourism form that was a lot i'm a little winded johnny thank you appreciate that all right i got my big cup of coffee and i'm gonna say probably y'all should grab some coffee because johnny can be very (laughs) long-winded we're good friends this is how we talk all right guys so we're gonna go over just the 101 if you don't know about okay let's just do it what is the overall health care system for Costa Ricans who live here? The locals. We don't, we're not even going to put the expats, although it's similar with expats, but just what's the system here? What are the, what's Costa Rica use? It's a socialized health care system that has basically um, three steps um, to get to the hospital. So you have... Wait, your, socialized medicine being in... Just I, I, I know it should be... What, what's socialized medicine? Socialized medicine is... Uh, Everybody has... <laughs> Everybody contributes to the medicine. So as a right, as a resident or a Costa Rican, you have the right to use the system. Right. So it's healthcare of a small country that put the emphasis on uh, taking care of its people and its health. So anybody can get health care or do you have to pay into it? You have to pay into it. Um, everybody pays into it. Um, you get to a certain age and you stop paying into it. But uh, everybody pays into it. Everybody has that right, and um, no public hospital will deny you entry. They they will all take care of you. They'll get you at least stable. So I think a lot of people think of socialized medicine as long lines, but we're not going to. You know, the, the, <laughs> you're waiting a long time to get that thing done. But li- sorry, I digress. Let's get back to it. I'm sorry. We did number one. What's number two? Well, the number two is the advice. Uh, advice is is basic. Think of it as an urgent care on the field, but there's two levels in advice. There's one that are all wait, 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 what a advice. What's that? It's um, is that a Spanish I, word? Yes, it's a Spanish oh. <laughs> word. Because I didn't I didn't know how to translate advice. If that's what it's called. Okay. I just wanted to be because Yes. Uh, so it's uh, a clinic, um, uh, a first a first level clinic, and then there's a second level second level clinic. And then you, after the second level clinic, you have the hospital itself. And then within the categories of hospitals, you have different specialties of hospitals. So some hospitals uh, specialize in certain areas. Um, let me give you an example, Mike. Cartago. Um, you have a, a, a hospital for this. But in San Jose, you may have a hospital that has different areas like um, senior care. And that's what they're focused on. So advice sounds like, uh, maybe I'm wrong on this. It sounds like you go to a doctor first 
and you're going to get a recommendation if you need to go further. Think of it as a, uh, the first line of referrals, okay. of many referrals you're going to have until you get to where, where you need to be. Where you need to be. And then remember this is that just because, oh, I'm a hypertensive or I'm AFib or I'm diabetic, they have to prove that you're diabetic or, you're, or you have AFib or things before they're going to put you in that category and you refer to that particular doctor. Because before you even go to that doctor, you're going to go see an internal medicine doctor. And then the internal medicine says, okay, yes, you are in this area. It's a whole process. So like everything in Costa Rica, which is, uh, and that's not a slight really, I guess, but it's, it is a process, right? Everything's a process. Everything is kind of red tapey a little bit. Right? Yeah. Patience, Mike. Hey, ooh, I see what you did there. Patience. <laughs> I see what you did this there. is, you got to have patience. If you're coming here or being here, you don't have patience. That's not a place. You know, the first thing I think of when you have processes like that, when I was kind of making the joke about like you're waiting for a long period of time, it's almost like they're doing it on purpose. I think so. Really? Yeah. No, seriously. And I mean, it's not like Costa Rica is the, the only country that kind of does this, like this long process. And then when they figure out, oh, you need something serious surgery, and then even that is still could be down the road. <laughs> so let me tell you about what that process looks like when you get to that point. Let's just say that, yes, you know what? It's deemed that you need cataract surgery. All right. Let's put you on the list. It could be a year to three years before you get that cataract surgery. Does it matter the, uh, the seriousness of the surgery? So now I need a, I got a more serious thing, maybe do with my heart or a, a hip replacement or I don't know, something more serious. Would I be? Would I'm going to answer a yes and no. I'm going to tell you why. Yes, the, the, it depends on the doctor, how his referral is made, on what the seriousness is going to be, and what category on the list you're going to push. But in Costa Rica, like anything in any process, there's a thing called an amparo. An amparo is basically you, you force the system to uh, either operate or deem that it's more serious so you don't die. <laughs> right. I know, I know it's, it's this, but it's, it's, it's put into the system. So you put in an bottle, basically you put in a complaint that they're not responding to you quick enough. And they, they examine your case to see, is it truly an emergency that we need to operate him, him or her now? Um, do we need to take the next steps and push somebody out of the way to put this person in? Basically, okay, it's cutting in line uh, through a process. Now, I'm assuming, I mean, well, I, I know this. I mean, obviously, we didn't mention it, guys, but what we're talking about is the Kaha, right? That's what they call it here is the Kaha is the socialized medicine part of it. Now, obviously, people with money, I've seen this with, I have friends, uh, Kiko's locals that have money that can go to the private hospital, yes. right? Or um, they can even have other supplemental insurances too, besides the Kaha, right? I mean, they, Correct. they, can, they can go, they could pay cash for private. They could, do they have an opportunity to get another sort of insurance as well yes. to go to the private? Or? Yes, they, they are. It's just not included in the health care system. And then the other thing you got to be careful of too is this, is that the, pri the public system, um, has its own way. I'm going to say that. Um, that what the private said, they have to verify. So let's just say that you went and got an MRI in the public sector, or the private sector, I should say. They're still going to verify with their own imaging, their own system, that that, in fact, is the truth. Oh, okay. So, so like anything, with people with money, you can get their stuff taken care of. And people without money are, tend to be waiting, basically. Mm -hmm. All the time. All right. Let's not uh, convolute. Again, this is just an overview so people that may have no idea. So now let's throw the gringo expat that comes here, wants to live in Costa Rica. And now if they want to become a resident, they want to become a resident, they, they have to pay into the Caja. So they're going to get the Caja regardless. So I'm assuming it's basically all kind of a similar thing. They get their, maybe their pharmaceuticals through the Caja. Maybe they do their... They but, but Mike, I think what we have to tell the 
those your viewers is that when you apply that doesn't mean you're automatically into this healthcare system that only means that you applied to be a resident you're not accepted into the system you're not paying into it yet you don't have any health care while you're in this process. Well, so, I mean, a, a good point. So when I first did my residency, I actually waited four years to get residency. I did not have health insurance until they said, Michael, we're ready for you. After four years, come and get your cedula. This is called a driver's license. And at that, the same day you pick that up, they take you upstairs and you sign up at that time for the CAHA. Right. And find out how much you're going to be paying. So for four years, unless I had a, a traveler's insurance or something like that, you don't have the governmental health insurance. Correct. And the other thing too, Mike, is that even when you do get it, finally get it, you still have to sign up for a new ice, which a new ice is a clinic in the area where you live. You have to go in there, physically bring in uh a phone bill or light bill. Yeah, that, prove you're that, where you're at. Prove where you're at. That gives you uh, the regional um, send the health center. And then it, that also assigns you to which hospital you're going to be at. So God forbid you need an emergency, you know where to go. So you have to kind of do your homework. And this is something that's done that they're not going to walk you through this process. Being, um, seeing it. They oh, go get some YouTubes, um, and go get I, some what? Go go watch some YouTubes on how the process is, <laughs> and uh, listen to Mike. Most people learn this one the hard way. <laughs> and basically, that's what kind of what happens. But the other thing too is that people don't. Um, they're not going to sit there and tell you this is what you got to do, or you're going to miss this. They're not going to tell you that there's a um, uh, an app that you put on your phone to get appointments at the OIS, but you have to be registered with the system with an email so that app can even work you're even confusing me now and that's yeah, that's the whole thing right i mean yep, that's it's, a, it's the whole that's thing that's the whole thing so it i'm assuming it's also true that you know the kaha is good for those littler things is that kind of how it's typically yes. done with let's say the gringo expat they're getting their again medic med medication or i don't know they have the flu or their shot or they get it there but usually when it's serious or something more serious, what are maybe name a few of the things that expats typically do or have, like whether it's outside insurance, where they run back to their home country and get surgery, whether it's, you know. Well, depending on what their age, if they're retirement age, they have your Medicare back in the States that can help you. The best thing, and I've always told sometimes people, is do your preventive health care. Know where you're at. Know what's going on with you do your regular annual uh, exams to understand what your body is, where you're at. Because, Mike, people just say, I'm healthy. I'm okay. You know, you, it, well, it's it's kind of like be proactive instead of reactive. You yeah. know, get your stuff done. I, I mean, I think they miss a lot of the most important insurance. I think it's eating right, exercise, and understand the, um, the tie-ins between mind and body. Because just, you know, just because you could be physically fit, and if your mind's not right, which cut which can cause stress and anxiety and all kinds of other ailments but outside you might be like hey look at me but all this stress can cause some serious issues so anyway i'm kind of more on that line as a first defense again patience right it's a key thing here and then mike they pay for medications but these medications just understand they're all generic so expect that they're not name brand medications. The ingredients are similar, but they're all generics. So what are some of the other things expats do to, um, if they want to either, some just have Kaha and nothing else. Like me, I only have Kaha. I have no other insurance. I do not have Medicare or Medicaid at this time. I don't pay traveler's insurance or anything. So <laughs> there's ways you can use the Kaha system to understand what you need and then buy the medications outside. And if it's a uh, chronic condition that you're doing, then um, some of the pharmacies that we use, uh, they give you, you know what, you bought 10 of these boxes, we're going to give you one box in, included with this. Or you came, you've been coming here for the last three months, here's a free box on that type of particular medication. So sometimes people do that. We tried to 
uh, when we forward to people to the pharmacy, where places where they, they get them, uh, pharmaceutical companies will give them those medications as a, as a freebie or how you want to call it. So, hmm. I know it seems so generic because, I mean, we live here, but a lot of people don't, aren't really familiar and not necessarily familiar with socialized medicine at all if you live in the States, really, except, well, I guess there's kind of a well, correlation my, between. Well, Mike, I, I, uh, I've been here for a few years now, and uh, I've gone there once. <laughs> gone where? Uh, to the, 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 the system itself. I've been there many times for other people, but for me, I've gone there once because I have a private side that I use, but when I when it's when it's needed or I should use it, it's there. You have a supplemental insurance, yeah. or do you just so, pay as you go uh, cash. Uh, both, both. Yeah, I guess everything is kind of depending, right, depending, on what yeah. you're doing. So. Dep- yeah, it's but people, it's people have to understand if you understand what your body is, how your health is, how how you talk, if you're doing exercise, then a lot of these things are not a factor. But it's those people that just let things come by. I'm just going to work it out later. It's not going to work well, out Well, I think w- the reason I just wanted to make this really quick overview video is because some people come here, you know, and they're, you know, they, wanna, they want cheap stuff, right? They're trying to, you know, budget. They only have a thousand coming in from the Social Security check. They're in a cheap apartment. Hey, that's all great. I, um, I get that. But um, if they're only going to have the Caja, they got to understand that if they have physical issues or any kind of problems pre-existing they they might want to stay closer to the city it's uh it's that simple mike if if they go into rural areas beaches that type of area even though you're paying less it could cost you more because they don't a lot of places don't have the specialties that maybe this particular person needs or if you think you're going to have an emergency it's not like in what I'm used to, what we're used to is calling 911 and they're there in 10 minutes. It doesn't work that way. Well, I was kind of, t- I mean, I, yes, that's obviously very true, but I was almost kind of saying, if you're, you know, let's, let's say you're kind of overweight or you haven't really exercised, you're going to issues. I mean, the Kaha can only do so much and there's going to be wait times with this, this stuff. You know, if they, if they allow you use the Kaha for this, this, and this, well, you might, but you might go like this during the time period. You know what I mean? Like you're coming with a pr- lot of yeah. pre-existing and you think that the Kaha is going to take care of that. Yes and no. I have a, my, my wife's aunt had gastric surgery through the, through the Kaha just, just recently. And she waited three years to get that done. But her, like you said, her health has declined. So sometimes price versus that cost of what you're going to um, take on later, that could be other items that are messed up. And by the time you do get what you need, you know, it's time. It's just you come with a preventive. And if you take on the private sector, certain things, and sometimes it works, but relying strictly on the Gaha, um, you will wait. Yeah, and I've, I mean, I don't want to scare everybody, but you can also die because I, I have quite a few stories, man. We could go anecdotal, and I don't even want to do that, but it's just, again, I want to kind of keep hitting that issue. If you're just coming to Costa Rica because everything you think is cheaper, they're going to fix all these health care through socialized medicine because you pay your $200 or whatever. I don't know. Yeah, that's it, all. It, it, it's, it's setting the expectation health care wise. Yes, it's, you're going to have it. Yes, they're going to take care of you. Yes, there's areas to how to speed things up. But the, the best thing you can do is taking care of yourself first to not to get to those situations um, seriously. If, you, if, you, if you're overweight, um, I know it's tough. I, sometimes I, just, I struggle myself with my, my fluffy. And, uh, I know you're so lucky we have the table right here <laughs> because they can't they can't uh, see all the wall. No, 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 you, 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 we struggle with certain. All of us struggle with something, but I think the biggest thing is that people take care of yourself. You know, you only have one body, and um, don't make it somebody else's uh, responsibility. It's your responsibility. Well, that old cliche is if you don't have your health, you don't have anything. No, it's pretty true. No, it's, it's pretty true. No, and. Costa Rica's pura vida, but pura vida takes some time. 
just guys my point in making this video again was that if you have questions which you're probably going to have this was an overview if you want to get a hold of johnny to help you with anything these uh, questions you might have email us and i'll get you get you to him but again just giving you an overview if you just had uh, no idea what costa rica had going on here we're going to do a little bit more deep dives johnny thank you very thank much you, sir thank hey, you guys everybody. i'm Hi guys, I'm Michael Allen for TravelCostaRicaNow.com. Peace guys, hope it helps. Things are going to pop up. Thinking Thank about you. living or traveling anywhere, or you're thinking about some health insurance, watch these videos. Things are going to pop up, and I'm going to put our videos against anybody. Ciao.